Azure Data Factory includes a rich set of capabilities to ingest, transform, and prep your data at scale in the cloud. In this brief demo, I'm going to walk you through the steps to ingest some data into the data lake, then use Power Query to prep the data. From there, we're going to dedupe the data using a data flow in ADF. And then at the end, we're going to send an email to signal the process is complete. Let's take a look at each one of these. So the first thing we do is use a copy activity. This copy activity is how you will ingest data into the lake. My source is going to be a movies CSV text file with movie ratings and release years in it. That file is sitting on premises on my laptop. I'll use the self-host integration runtime to lift that data into a folder in my Azure blob store. So with that simple configuration, when I execute this pipeline, then ADF will take the on-prem file and load it into a folder in my blob store in, in Azure. Now that I have that file in Azure, I want to clean names and values inside of there because there are some data quality issues with the release years, the ratings, and some of the string names in the text file. So to do that, I'm going to use a Power Query for my data wrangling. When I click on the settings for that activity, I can see that I have a powerful set of serverless compute behind the scenes that ADF is using to execute my Power Query data wrangling at scale, at any scale. In this case, I'm using eight total cores of general purpose compute to do that using my Azure integration runtime. Let's open up the Power Query and take a look at what that looks like. So there are a series of steps I'm going through to, uh, to wrangle and to prep my data. The first is that I'm filtering a set of rows out of the initial set of data. I'm going to then remove some columns. After that, I adjust some of the values so that I have some clean data, taking out the uh, bad data and changing the names so that there are no characters and those do not belong in there. I'm then, then going to sort the data. And I'm going to sort that data by the movie ID, which is the unique key associated with each of the movies. And then I'm going to join the data with uh, a similar set of data that is in my SQL table. So I include, along with the initial text file, a link to my SQL database that has some additional data about the, the SQL movies. And then I expand that into an expanded set of columns available to be loaded into my sync. So now I can take that data and land it into one of the data factory sinks. And you can look at the end-to-end -end design of your data wrangling from the design view here in the Power Query integration in ADF. Let's go back to the pipeline. And my next activity is my data flow. This is where I'm going to then dedupe the data that is in there. I can execute this against a scaled out Spark compute. This is serverless and I don't need to manage any of it. When I open up this transformation, there's a very simple data flow that uses a series of graphical steps in a design graph that will create a set of data that only has distinct rows. So the data that was prepped in the previous step in Power Query will now have deduping here in the data flow. Back to the design of the pipeline, the final step in my pipeline in this sequence of activities is to send an email when this is complete. So let's go ahead and execute this from debug and let's see what happens. Okay, and a few minutes later, our end-to-end -end pipeline is complete. You can see the different steps that we're taking. It actually goes from bottom to top, so we ingest the data into the lake. We clean the names and the values with our Power Query data wrangling. We then use a do-do process in ADF data flows, then we sent a mail at the end. In each of these steps, then, we'll have a detailed monitoring view for everything that occurred within that step. So let's take a look at the Power Query details. And the Power Query is converted from that underlying M script into the ADF Dataflow Spark compatible script. And this is what that looks like. So you can click on the different steps to see how long each, each step took, how many partitions were created on the Spark cluster to execute the script and how long each step within your transformations were taken within the Spark cluster. And then the subsequent data flow step also uses the exact same compute. I use the same Azure integration runtime. And so you'll get the same monitoring view on there as well with the details of how long everything took, each stage within that, and how much data was actually moved. And you can see at the end within that data flow that we're running, the dedupe, when that executed, the data was being landed in two different places. Uh, we branched off and went to both a folder and a database table. Within the Power Query data wrangling data prep step, you could also do the same thing. In the Power Query, the sync 
I chose was a folder, I could have just as well put this into a database. In fact, I have a SQL movies table, and then you can map your fields accordingly into your target database table, and you'll be able to run and execute SQL scripts before and after the data is written. You can also recreate tables and truncate tables inside of your Power Query data rank. The last thing I want to show you is that you can also use the Power Query data prep capability to explore your data in terms of summary statistics and profiles of your data. So if I go back to the movies wrangling and I turn on the profiling, you'll see the distribution of data and data about the values within your columns and your data. This is also available for you as well in the data flow. And so inside of that data preview, you can also see summary statistics about your columns inside of there. So EDF gives you an end-to-end -end capability for a data engineer to be able to ingest data, to be able to prep it, explore it, transform, and then land that data into the appropriate data stores within your target systems. Thanks for watching.